Well, all right. It is good to be in the house of the Lord again this morning. Amen. And I'm so glad to be able to share the Word of God with you all this morning because God humbles me every time I read it. Uh, we are reading out of the book of 2 Samuel. And we're, well, last week we finished chapter 12, lesson, I mean, chapter 11, lesson 11. And we found that David had displeased the Lord by becoming a murderer, adulteress, a liar. What else? God was displeased with him. Though. So look at let's look at chapter twelve, the parable of Nathan. It says here, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him. There were two men in one city, and one rich, and the other poor. But I want to stop there. Before we even get on with this, with this, David thinks he's got off. Yes, he does. Yes, David thinks he got away with killing somebody and stealing a woman and getting her pregnant. He thinks he's going to have a baby. And something happens right here that I believe that God does to a lot of us Christians when we sin. And the Lord sent Nathan. Mm -hmm. Think about that. How many times have God sent somebody to you? Amen. When you needed a word. Amen. And it wasn't somebody going, somebody coming to you saying necessarily, thus saith the Lord, but it was somebody came to you and helped you get back on track. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now you notice when we read this, Nathan did not come accusing David of anything. No. Mm -mm. Nothing. Okay, so let's keep reading. So far we see that Nathan's telling him a story. It says, The rich man, verse 2, had exceeding many flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought up and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children, and it did eat of his own meat, drank from his own cup, lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock, of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come unto him. Okay, so here we have a, a story that Nathan's kind of painting for David. Uh, rich man had a bunch of sheep. Right. The poor man had one little pet lamb. Mm -hmm. yep. The pet of the family. Mm -hmm. yep. You know? Uh, now, I myself don't like laying with my animals. I don't. I mean, what I mean by that is I don't have animals that live in my house right now. Thank God. I know some of y'all have your little dogs that might sleep on your bed, right? They do indeed. I had one that used to sleep on my feet and make my feet hurt all night long. Uh, but he's gone and I don't have to worry about that no more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've also seen people that had cats, so many cats. I, went, I remember visiting somebody when I was a kid, and, and we went to the dinner table, and a cat got up and ate out of the lady's plate, and she let it do that. And I'm thinking, no, no, uh-uh. But here this man is in this story. He has this little lamb, and he takes care of it like a daughter. And it wasn't uncommon to have... a. Uh, Lambs are very, uh, uh, are, are animals that are similar to dogs when they come to knowing who you are. They know your face. They have face recognition. And they love you. Aww. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so this guy, this rich man, has a visitor come to see him. And uh, instead of taking one of the lambs out of his own flock, he goes and slaughters that guy's pet right. and eats it. All right. So... That brings us to verse 5. This is where, this is where uh, it's going to be revealed to David what Nathan was trying to get at. And that's how sometimes God talks to us that way. He will reveal something yes. to us through Amen. something else. You know? It says, And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, that man hath done this thing, shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And I'm going to stop there. i got to stop there because Nathan really hits him hard in verse 7. But I'm going to stop because I want to point out, did you notice how quick David was to judge others it's rather than himself? He had just committed murder, adultery, and he's mad about some guy killing a baby lamb. Exactly. 
think it might have been conscience just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, David demands restitution, fourfold restitution. He says, because you didn't have pity. And that word pity there is hamal. It means compassion. You didn't spare it. David had passed judgment on himself, but he did not know of it. Yep. And the bad thing about it is, he wanted him to give, he wanted the man to pay back the man fourfold. David couldn't pay the man back at all. No, he couldn't. Not at all. No. no. What do you do with that when you cannot make restitution? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. You, some people have to come to the point to where they know they can't get restitution by doing it themselves. That's right. Uh -huh. you can't do it. Can't do it. Let's look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, Nathan said unto David, Thou art that man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. I gave thee thy master's house, thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave to thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the high tight with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. All right. So there's a couple things I want to point out that, that when in Nathan's statements toward David. First of all, uh, God, God reminded David of who he was. That's the first thing God's going to remind you. When you're walking in sin and you're not doing right and you're, 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 you're not doing right, God says, aren't you a child of the king? Yeah. Aren't you the anointed heir of God? Yes. What are you doing? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, he, this was the most powerful man on earth This Nathan's talking to at this time. Or one of the most powerful men on earth, I should say. Uh... He said to him that all that was Saul's was given to you, everything, all his wives, his harems, all the women you would ever want. But it wasn't enough. And it wasn't enough. Yeah, you and he says, why did you take someone else, his wife? He's asking him. Yeah. And then you had to commit murder to, to do it, to take somebody else's wife. And on mine, on verse 9, it says, Why then have you despised the word of the Lord and have done this horrible deed? I mean, that's pretty strong right there to be reprimanded. I mean, why did you despise the word of the Lord? I mean, that's pretty big. Well, it's, it's obvious. God said, Thou shalt not kill. Right. And that word kill there is murder. Exactly. And that's, and that's exactly, exactly what he did with him. It now, was, you know, of course, David was trying to maybe, maybe, maybe talk his way out of it. But here we see someone hiring someone else or finagling someone else to kill someone. Exactly. Today, if you do that, even if the guy's killed or not, you can go to prison for it. Conspiracy. If you plan a murder of someone. Yeah. It's against the law, and it was back then. All right. So that brings us now to the consequences of sin. David repents. Verse 10. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house. Still uh, Nathan speaking to David. The sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me. And this is God talking. And hast taken the wife of Uriah the high type to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor. And he shall lie with thy wives. In thy sight of the Son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the Son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Howbeit because of this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So funny about this we don't get this a lot of times and what I mean by we don't get this is we don't realize that when we choose to to sin choose openly to sin I mean there's a mission I understand but we're opening the door you know for the enemy or the accuser to come and take what 
I mean, right here it tells you, the Lord said, because of this, you're not going to die, but because of this, this is what's going to happen. Right. We, you know, he chose to sin, and because he chose to sin, all of a sudden, you know, you chose to open that door. You know, we talk about how Christ has the keys, but how many times have we given the enemy the key to be able to destroy our lives? Oh, absolutely. Now, God had sent Nathan to David, and, and I, I looked up in, in Dake's, uh, Dake's Bible, uh -huh. eight predictions of Nathan. And all these predictions come true. Here they are. The sword would never depart from your house. I will raise up evil against you out of your own house. Right. I will take your wives and give them, give them to your neighbors. He, will, he shall lie with your wife in the sight of the sun. You did that secretly, but I will do this before all Israel and before the sun. Number six, the Lord has put away your sin and you shall not die. Seven, because of your sin, you will cause your enemies to blaspheme the Lord. And number eight, the child that is born that you have will surely die. Now, even his own family would, become, would, would come against him. And his wives would be raped by the neighbors, which happens right. later on. Okay, all this stuff happens. Right. Um, and the word neighbor there, I wanted to look that up to make sure who he is talking about. Uh, the word is Rhea, R-E-A, associate, friend, or a brother. Now, in verse 13. Nathan confesses, I mean, David confesses to Nathan. Yeah, what Nathan, what David says to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. He realizes who he had sinned against. And uh, last week I mentioned three Psalms. And I want to look up, uh, the, the, you might want to write them down, but Psalms 51 is the most famous. That's the one we're going to read. Uh, Psalms 32, 1 through 11. And Psalms 103, 1 through 22. Three I'm sorry. Psalms. Oh, I'll, I'll slow down. Uh, Psalms 32, 1 through 11. Psalms 103, 1 through 22. And then Psalms 51, 1 through 19. And uh, those three Psalms were written because David had repent, repented. Uh -huh. I'll get that in a minute. Three psalms were written because David repented. Let's go to Psalms 51. And do you think that's why the Lord did not kill him? Is because immediately that the, he noticed, he confessed it, and addressed it immediately. Oh, absolutely. And and the other thing, you know, let's read it. Okay. Something happens to David. Remember, remember as we've been reading this, I remember I told you, you know, we looked at Saul, and Saul was kind of a good guy when it first started out, and we seen how he fell. David was a really good guy when he first started out. Right. But we found little things about him. Lies. Little things. And little things turn into bigger things. And it ended up being here that, that he became uh, a murderer over these things. So, uh, there's 19 verses here. And there's a few people here. Uh, who wants to pick a few verses and then stop? And then we can, somebody else can pick a few more until we read the whole thing. I can do 32, 1 through... Oh, we're just going to do Psalms 51. Oh, 51? Yeah, the other ones I want you all to just look at for your, for your own benefit. But right. Psalms 51 is the one that I, I wanted to key in on. Okay. I'll do the first three or four. Okay, go ahead. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Okay, who wants to pick up the five? I will. For I was born a sinner, <clears throat> yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the Lord, <clears throat> teaching me wisdom even there. Verse 7, purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I'll be whiter than snow. 8, oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me, now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins, remove the stain of my guilt. Do you want me to go with 10? Yeah, read 10. 
Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Who's got a letter? Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltlessness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my Sorry, mouth shall I show forth that. my praise. You know? Anybody want to pick up at 16 through 19? If not, I will. I can. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. Look with favor on Zion and help her. Rebuild the walls of, of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with sacrifices. Offer them, offer in the right spirit. With burnt offerings and a burnt and a whole burnt offering, the bulls again will be sacrificed on your altar. All right. There's so much we can learn from this particular psalm. Amen. But but I want to I want to point out what are the steps to true repentance. What's the first thing you have to do? Realize that you sin. Realize you sin. Thank you, Joyce. That's exactly what I have here. Recognize your sin. Second thing. Before you even put it away yourself, you got to recognize that God has put it away. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about according to this, what we're reading. The third thing you do is you have to walk in that deliverance that he's already provided for you. Mm -hmm. Because so many people want to do, I recognize my sin and I'm going to put away my sin. Yeah. Does that work? No. No. <laughs> no. How many of us have tried that? I recognize that I'm a sinner and I'm going to put away my I promise you God I'll never ever sin again. And you fail. Yes. The reason you failed is that you need to recognize that God puts your sin away. And you need to walk in what He has done and not what you want to do. So many Christians are out there on cloud nine thinking they're so good. Amen. Uh-oh. Uh mm -hmm. Amen. Because they have done this, they have done that, and they have done this other thing, and that other person over there has it. Yep. That That's helps. why I am on cloud nine, because I did something that they didn't do. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. God did the same thing for that person over there. As he did. Out there. Yes, sir. That he did right here. Amen. Every single person, God did it for everyone. And that's hard to con con conceive because there's so many evil people out there. You think, God can't save that person. They're <laughs> evil. And then you look at yourself and you go, Come on now. Let me save me. Uh -huh. Thank <laughs> you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And what is the penalty for sin? Death. It's death, right? Now, God pardoned David's sin, right? He right. said, I... I pardon your sin. I put it away, and you shall not die. And you shall not die. But verse 14 says something that's very, very true. 14 says, How be it? In other words, there's a consequence. Yeah, mine says, Nevertheless. Nevertheless, you've done this thing. You're going to have to own up to what the consequences are from your sins. And that's the way it is. Whether they be secret sins, or hidden sins, mm -hmm. or open sins. Mm -hmm. All covered by the blood of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it says that, that uh, David had done deeds that provoked an occasion. And that word occasion is naad in Hebrew, N-A-A-D. And uh, it means to scorn or abhor. He said that, Nathan said to him that, or God said to him, that your sin's going to make it so that other people hate you because they think you're something that you, that you, you, you said you were something and you're not. Right. Uh, and also, he says, the bastard child will die. Yeah. It's not my child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Some children die because they're not God's children. I'll probably get crucified for that in some circles. But you know what? It's true. I, I, I think I've shared this before. I used to say, and I've taught myself not to say this anymore because I saw how it wasn't hitting the heart the way it should have. You know, a lot of times when something would happen, and I'm, I've mentioned it when Adrian got bitten by the snake, and I said, you know, and I remember saying at work, it's like it didn't get to be a big football around it. It just swelled his hand. And I said, it's because I'm a child of God. And I remember one person... Very young and immature in her walk. And I understand. She says, we're all children of God. And, you know, you try to explain them. They're like, no, we're not. But, you know, it's like then you get into this battle. It's like, okay, what am I going to do to honor you, Lord? You know, can I correct her and will that honor you? Or would it just show up that I'm wrong? Which I know I'm right. I mean, and I'm not, it's not about right or wrong, but people don't realize, it's like you have to make the choice to follow him. Amen. And if you choose not to follow, that's what makes you a child of the king. That's what makes you a child of the king. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you're invited to the table. We've said this many times. They're, they're, you're invited to the table. But if you don't go and sit at the master's table and eat with him, you are not a child of God. No. If you don't sit at the table and eat with the Father, you're not a child of God. If that was the case, then why... Does the gospel have to be spread? Exactly. When my dad asked, Why did Jesus come? Why did he die if we're all going to go to heaven anyway? When y'all were kids, when the dinner bell rang, especially in a family, probably Sanders' family, when the dinner bell rang, they said dinner was on the table. What did you do? Did you go and say, I'm just going to go play, I'm not going to go in and eat? Sometimes. Well, you, but, but yeah. back in the day, we you. that's all you got. Hey, that's if right. you don't come and eat now, you don't eat. You don't eat. <laughs> but if you do... If there's any leftovers, if there's any they'll left? be in the they'll be in the fridge. There was no leftovers in my house. There were very few at our house because they didn't. Yeah. We were talking this morning. When we were kids, they didn't have grocery stores like they no. do today. No, no sir. No. You raised probably seventy-five percent of what you ate. Right. You can during the summertime after you harvested the fruit. You can for several days. During the fall is when you during the, during the falls when you kill the hogs and put up your beef in the smokehouse. Right. When's the last time you seen the smokehouse? Hey, and you know Jesus has got all this provision stored up already. Yeah, all we got to do the, is the table's full. All we got to do is come and eat. That's it. You know, it's and that's wonderful. really I think what the problem not the problem our perception in the United States it's hard for us to perceive that because. I still remember that. Yeah. I, I still, I mean, granted I was an only child, so it might have been a little bit yeah. different for me because on our cases, we waited until Dad got home from work. And that's when we... We did. We, we, we did. We most of the time did. Yeah, we did. We had meat once a week. Huh? We had meat once a week. Yeah, that's all we had. Just once, on Sunday. Well, Every other day we, we had potatoes and We were we blessed. Yeah. I was extremely blessed. We always had a cow, we had chickens, and we had a pig. And Jesus owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Yes, he does. And all the tractors <laughs> under them hills. <laughs> That's all right. right. Let me get back to my lesson. I, I, we started late, so I'm going to go a little bit later, right? We're going to take our time, right? David loses a child, verse 15. Nathan departed unto his house. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and fasted, and went in, and lay all night on, upon the earth. And the elders of the house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. The servant of David feared to tell him, that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child's dead? Right. But when David saw that the servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servant, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. I'm going to stop there. This is a very, very interesting thing that the Lord showed me. First of all, it says here that the Lord struck the child. Right. 
Do, does God strike children? The word there is nagap. <clears throat> That's what the word just said. And it says to push, gore, defeat, stub, or inflict the disease. To beat, dash, hurt, plague, slay, smite, and strike. One of the reasons this was done was that God had prophesied it through Nathan that it would happen. Mm -hmm. Remember what we you prayed it this morning. What God says, He does. That's right. Mm -hmm. Again, the child was conceived. How was the child conceived? Illegitimately. In, In sin. In sin. And what is the wages of sin? Death. Yeah. Have you ever prayed knowing someone is dying? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. David, it says besought, and that word is bakash, B-A-Q-A-S-H. He sought, inquired, and strived after. David fasted and prayed while the child was alive, right? Yeah. Right. Pleading. And to no avail. Right. Let me tell you something. God showed me this, though. How many days did it take for the child to die? Seven. How many days did it take him, God to create the earth? Seven. What did he do on the seventh day? He rested. What, did, what happened when God rested to Adam? He sinned. Yep. Yep. And he died. Mm -hmm. I think that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That on the seventh day, this boy died. And on the seventh day, Jesus was also resurrected. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can see that the, the uh, David was also resurrected. Yeah, he he says, God. create in me a new heart of God. Uh -huh. Why was I acting that way? Uh -oh. When I started looking up this seven, this the word seven. Seven is a very important uh, number in the Bible. And, it, and I at first started trying to put together something for sevens in uh, using my Dakes Bible. Right. And I don't know if you can see the, this. Mm -hmm. This is actually blowed up. Bigger. <laughs> and there's about, I would say, 300 sevens mentioned by Dakes. But he didn't give you scriptures. He gave you page numbers, so I couldn't give you this handout. Right. Over 300 sevens. Yeah. So I decided to go ahead and do a little study myself on sevens and, and condense it down to just a few things. Y'all have the handout, right? Yeah, you up. Oh, Joyce, you need to hand out the handout. Oh, <laughs> hand out the handout sevens and also at those two. I gave them to you this morning. <laughs> I'm slacking. Uh, the, what I am handing out, it is getting, getting this ready for next week's lesson. Uh, uh, two more outlines and then, then a handout on sevens. And one, once we finish the seven thing today, we'll, we, will, we will complete this lesson. And uh, I'd like us to get deeper into sevens. We can. Uh, maybe we should do this next week. Because I really, I, you know. These are good. I, I know. I mean, well, I'm suspecting. I've studied some numerics in the Bible, you know? Yeah. And I'm not really getting into the numerics. I mean, no, no, I'm getting into just how many times it's mentioned, how important the it is. Symbolism. Yeah, it is there big time. In fact, I started writing down notes, and I ended up with this mash of things on my... I, I, I don't know if any of you have ever looked over my shoulder. Some of you have at my notes. My notes are pretty good. I mean, uh -huh. uh, and then sometimes they're just wild out there. They're just throw because I, I start writing down all these little bubbles with with right. things God gives me, you know? yeah. and I ended up with all these bowls on this page, and I decided to put it into this uh, this handout. Yeah, because I'd rather not rush through it. I'd rather just really get into. I it. think that's what we'll do. I think we will close with this one. Uh, we are we are up to uh, we are finished through verse nineteen. Uh -huh. So next week we will begin with sevens, yes. and also uh, chapter twelve, verse twenty which is David worships God. Okay, so that's a good place to stop. God bless y'all. I really enjoyed y'all's comments this week.